Okay, here I am back. I did a video about a binary search tree. I don't know how well I did, but I tried my best. <laughs> and now I'm gonna definitely not do such a good job, but I'm gonna try to show you some steps on how you might think about visualizing the tree. And I'm kind of gonna not do it, I've said this like a bunch of times, but I'm gonna just do it in a very simple way. And I'm asking you, the community, those of you with visual talent, with creative ideas, to make a more beautiful um, animated version of this with some kind of creative possibilities that I can't even think of. So um, here we go. Let's uh, try to get started here. So first of all, I, I'm, I have the P5.js library, even though I use nothing from P5.js other than setup and no canvas. But now I'm going to say create canvas uh, 600 comma 400. And I'm going to say background 51. And I'm going to do this. Oh, boy, that's a big canvas. OK, that's better. Just zoomed in a little bit. OK. So I'm kind of running out of space here, but let's move this a little bit over. Let's give me a little bit more space here. Okay, so this is the canvas. So now, whenever I create a node, let's actually have the node also get an x and a y. And say this dot x equals x, and this dot y equals y. Then perhaps, well, we could keep the traverse. I might, I could also, store all the nodes in an array to iterate through them, but let's not do that. Okay, so what do I want to do? Whenever I create a node, where do I do that? Oh, add value. Okay. Uh, if, uh, if root equals null, so the root node should be, uh, the x should be width divided by two, and so I'm not actually using the constructor here. Uh, height divided by two. So I'm just setting it directly. So I have this option of when I create the node, I could pass it in x and y, or I could just set it. But here I want to set it because I want to make the root node there. Now, let's use this traverse. So the traverse function in the node is right here, which is visit. So instead of, oh, in addition to console logging it, let's just do um, fill 255 text this dot value this dot x, this dot y. This is sort of uh, no stroke. So let's just actually draw the text. So let's, let's run this. Look at this. That root node is right there, 68. Now, it's hard for you to see it, but that's fine. And I realized that I don't want, I want the root to be at the top. So let's make y um, 16. So we can see the root node is up at the top, 4, which is also happens to be the lowest node. That's just a coincidence. 76 is the root. OK. So now, whenever I add a node, so now when I add a value, if it's root, otherwise I go to this.root add node. So in add node is here. Uh, where is that? Add node. Aha. So this is where I actually set it to be this node's left or this node's right. So if I want to do that, now I could say if it's to the left, it's x should be this node's x minus I don't know, 50? <laughs> and it's y should be this node's y plus uh, 20. I'm just making up stuff. And then when I create the right node, it should be to the right, but its y is still down. So this is like a kind of rudimentary way of doing it, right? The root node gets a location. And then I do the same thing, but whenever I add a node, I look to where I'm adding it, and I just grab that other node's location and move it down and to the left. There's a lot of problems with this, but it'll give us a basic idea. Look at that. So it would be nice now to draw some lines between them. <laughs> and you can see how, uh-oh, these are on top of each other. So here's where I think I want to stop. Uh, <laughs> here's where I think I want to stop because I'm tired and I want you, the community, to figure out more interesting solutions. So first of all, what would be a way of, let's, let's see, if, can I draw the line even? Can I at least draw the line? Let's try to draw the line. Um, uh, where, do I, where do I visit? So visit, how do I know which, which one I previously, in my traverse, um, where am I drawing it? I already forgot, under, under visit. So this is where I draw it. How do I know where it came from? I don't. 
So I would have to pass in here, when I visit, I would have to pass in a parent, like where it came from, in order to draw a line from the two different locations. So visit from me, visit from me, and then in the tree, visit from this dot root. Let's see if that works. Then now I could draw a line which goes from parent.x, parent.y, to this.x, this.y. And I need, oops, so this would need a stroke. There we go. So you can see this isn't so great. <laughs> Let's at least draw like, oh, you know what I should do? I should say text align center. And let's also draw a little ellipse. Uh, and uh, let's give it like a size. Whoops. What did I do that's wrong here? Ellipse. Ellipse. <laughs> Wait, what's the error? Undefined. Text align. Spelled text align wrong. Text align. Whoops. <laughs> no fill. So we can see here, I'm kind of getting started here. Ah, this is good. So you can see this is now the tree. But I haven't done such a good job because, you know, these things shouldn't be so, maybe they should be far apart and then closer depending on the level. You know, if, if this has a lot of numbers in it, like if I were to add 100 numbers to this, like this is a mess. Everything is all overlapping everything else because the nodes next to each other have left and the right. So. Here's where I'm going to stop. This is giving you an inkling of an idea. So what I'm asking you, the community watching this video, um, this code will be on GitHub. There'll be a README file there. You can add your versions of it. Um, how can you do a more creative or effective way of visualizing this tree with proper spacing? What might be some algorithm to figure out the proper spacing? You know, you could use physics even. Like what if you use spring forces between all these nodes um, and some kind of repulsion forces to, to like have it figure itself out that's known as a force-directed graph, by the way. I also think it'd be really wonderful to see an animation. So what if you created, here's something you could do. You create a sketch where there's nothing. And you have, uh, every time you press a button, it adds something to the tree and you see it animate to its correct spot. And then you could hit a button called traverse and it animates through the tree in the recursive fashion. So what type of animated ways could you explain um, trees? So I would love for anybody to do that. Um, share those projects with me if you want to, um, this is actually, a, this is also a video that's with a, a course that I'm, anyway, just look in the video's description. There'll be links to all the places to look to contribute your uh, stuff, okay? So, um, and Alka is making a suggestion, get n items per level and separate them evenly. Yeah, so one thing you could look at is, can you look through the tree to figure out how many items there are per level? And that's how you figure out the spacing. So that's a great clue there. Thank you, Alka, from the chat. All right, I will see all of you another time in another video in another place, not too far in the future, I hope. Uh, and have a good, uh, I would say weekend, because right now it's gonna be the weekend for me, but you, who knows, you're watching this like from some bunker in some underground place where it's Tuesday morning or something. Or maybe you're just on a, in a field. I imagine you're in a field with flowers around you and the wind blowing. If that's the case, play some Frisbee, frolic, smell the roses, forget about this binary tree stuff. See you later.